Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, everyone has that unique power to truly be seen. And if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you are in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you do, because, well, you're listening. Uh, hit subscribe, hit that subscribe button, you know, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us the old five-star rating on your podcast provider of choice. Uh, we're pretty much everywhere, places like Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google, and plus we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In The Seats YouTube channel, so you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on the Facebook, we're on the Twitter, we're on the Instagram, we're on the TikTok, and we're on the letterbox. That you guessed it, we're at In The Seats for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large. Because, you know, if we love to write about it and watch it and talk about it, we love it when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please, pay us a visit. We got a fun one hitting limited theatrical and VOD today. It is Freaks vs. the Reich. And and it's set during World War II, obviously occupied Rome, when a group of circus performers who have supernatural powers uh, band to fight together to fight the oppressive Nazi regime in Italy. It's uh, it's the story of these four young superpowered uh, circus performers who are looking uh, to flee the Nazi menace for the shores of America. Uh, there is uh, the beautiful electrically charged Matilda, uh, Sinizio, an albino who can control insects, uh, Mario, a dwarf but has magnetic powers, and Fluvio, a strong man who is covered head to toe with hair, but on their heels it's the psychotic Franz who. Uh, is addicted to ether and has uh, has gifts that can uh, help him understand what's going to happen in the future. And, uh, you know, depending on who you look at for uh, uh, Hitler and the Reich, it's, it's not always going to work out the best way possible. But, I mean, will the freaks be able to escape the grasp of the Nazis? Or will history change forever? This is just a fun, fun movie. It's fantasy, but there's some real-world stuff going on in there. Uh, And it's from writer-director Gabriele uh, Minetti. Uh, You may have seen his film, They Called Me Jig. It uh, won a bunch of awards, but, I mean, this is really a... This is really a fun film. It's a bit of a mashup, but it's really an enjoyable piece of work. And we had the unique pleasure of sitting down with Gabrielli to to talk about sort of the origins of the story and like why he wanted to tell it and what got him into the business in the first place but uh you know it's a fun ride and it was a fun talk too but uh if you are in the states and uh, you are at a theater that is uh near Freaks versus Reichs uh Reich excuse the Reich excuse me uh do go check it out because uh it's a lot of fun it's also available on video on demand but first, enjoy our talk with Gabrielli because uh, between you and me, it's a darn good one. So much for the time today, and I mean, congratulations on the movie, man! I absolutely loved it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Now, I mean, walk me through, I guess walk me through the origin of, of wanting to tell this story on your end. Well, I, I don't know. We just I, just, I was, you know, you gotta understand. I mean, a movie that was called the Komi Jiga in Italy went really, really, really well. It was a surprise. I was offered everything over here and i said no 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 i produced my first one i'm gonna produce this too and i usually do like this i take like six seven eight ideas that i love and i said well, what i'm gonna do and then i you know i i i mesh them together put them all together and and all those crazy tones come out and i try to find an harmony between them because that's that's me you know i mean that's 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 even you know the Roman culture. I mean, we as Roman, I'm, I'm a Roman of the center of Rome. We we have a way to sit on to sit on tragedies and laugh about it and then cry about it, be childish about it, and 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 you know it's 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 like a sinusoidal crazy thing. So to, for me, 
it's kind of hard to make a movie that it's a straight line and I get really bored uh, that way because my mind is not like this. So I, you know, what my by creating this melting pot of uh, of, of 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 tones, I I I thought, ah, oh, yeah, now now I like it. But but uh, I mean, the movie is all about identity, and uh, to me, it's a it's a very important thing. And you know, I mean, I love my grandma so much, really, really, really a lot. And um, Second World War was something that you know they said. Probably if I if I were an American, they would have given me pills for ADD. But, but I remember my grandma when she was telling me stories about Second World War that she lived in first person. I just was so there, you know. I I remember my position on the on the on the on the bed when she was telling me all the stories. And so when I when when the other screenwriter said. Should we put it in the second world world, these crazy stories? And I said, oh, that's perfect. It kind of, of course, it works so much. You know, the freak and the Nazi are two realities so far from, from themselves. And it works as a conflict. But uh, there's there's also something personal there. You know, everything that happens is very close to my house. I, I'm, a, I'm it, Seriously, the ghetto is like, now I live like six, 500, 600 meters from the ghetto. But... I used to live like a kilometer from there. And my my family is all is all from Trastevere. That it's it's where I'm right now. And it's a story. What happened there was 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 really there. You know. No, absolutely. I mean, I, that that's one of the things that really stood out for me in watching the film. I mean, it's that duality of the reality of the situation, but then the fantasy with these characters, and we're following along like. How did you manage to like really kind of thread the needle? Because I mean, you could have easily twisted it one way or the other, and like, but it, to me, in watching the entire film, it was like you managed yeah. to sort of keep the tone right on that razor line. Yeah, you're right. This is this was the main thing for me. Like, okay, you know, you want to do like an essay, so you want to keep, you know, that tone, and otherwise you go out of tones. And I just wanted to, you know, it can be fantasy, it can be real. But first of all, I have to say this. I am Italian. I'm Roman. And, you know, all those movies that you probably saw, like Rome, Open City, Paisa, all, the, all those great movies done by the guy that invented neorealism are documents of the past. And they're really, really real because what is real are the people that are in the movie. You know, yeah. well, then you see all those faces and you know, all those guys are our grandfathers and everything. So, so to me, do something really, really, really real. It's it, it, it's kind of strange, you know. It doesn't really work. Even when I watch a movie, that sometimes you change the language, you know. But you have to do it in, in that country. But you put it in a different language. So it's kind of strange. It doesn't really make sense being Italian, you know. So I wanted. To do, we did a lot of research that you guys can benefit from. Then on the language, the way they talk, the way they have that dialect the roman dialect of those times and uh, but um but then i said you know it's me telling the story i can study all the things about second world war i can study all the things that my grandma told me about the place and my father and everybody but i haven't lived that time so it's it's more respectful to just you know just just tell that it's a fantasy that's that that, that it's a story of course that's a language that is very familiar to me it's it, Easier to, for me to play like this, but when I when we thought that France, the villain, could talk and be connected to the future, that's like us saying this is a story of guys that were born in 1976 and are you know reimagining that past. And to us, it's better to do it like this because otherwise, go watch the the real original. You know, you have documents of the great times, and to me, it's kind of hard. You know, I can I can't really think about it. Sometimes it's kind of funny to me watching those movies, even if there's a lot of research. So, because I think that the truth is in the voice of, 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 the, of the filmmakers, you know, when they they want to tell you their vision and they need to find an harmony and, a, and, 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 and that needs to stick out. So that's the truth. And the truth about Freaks Out, a part of, you know, the war, the beautiful scenes, all the fireworks, it's something about identity. You have a freak that is unique. You know, you gotta make an image. So you gotta find a way to create that image that makes sense. And he's unique the way he's shaped. You know, the guy with all the hairs, the albino and everything. And or, or France himself with six fingers. And then you have a little girl. And she looks perfect. 
and easily um, no one of us. But she says, I'm the worst monster of everybody. And at the end, a Nazi says, well, she's a monster. And when she, because she reveals herself. And how she does that? By, you know, being, getting free from her father, you know, like a hypothetical father. Because now she becomes a woman. It's like a bat mitzvah then, you know, she becomes a woman. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and she becomes powerful. And, and that uniqueness, it's what we have inside. And when you make it shine, it can be look and seen as a monster, but you can be fucking strong and terrible. And what's beautiful about that too, it's the Nazi thinking that you think that, you know, if you belong to something that is supreme and, and you are better than the other ones, and that's the annihilation of identity. So that's what happens to France. He doesn't see himself as an incredible, talented, human being with that music and piano stuff and he chops off his finger puts on the, the the thing of his brother and you know he loses himself he loses everything he loses the circus losing his 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 fingers he loses Irene he loses everything so there's no need to go on so the movies basically that's my truth that's that's what I think maybe you can say wow you're so stupid and shy but that's 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 what I want to say but I say with the language of cinema that something that's very important to me and speaks to me well and i mean there are such unique visual set pieces in this film i mean i think you may be the first person to ever have a a sex scene between two uh two where where people <laughs> in the history of cinema but i mean how important was it for you to really kind of craft this movie not only obviously in the way of just sort of the the character building and sort of giving us the duality between the two stories that are going on but to really give us some really visually engaging set pieces throughout the entire thing, sex pieces or sex well, not sex. set pieces like you know mo like like moments in the film. Well, you know, I, I always try to do this. I'm a very um, you know guy with Benny limits. I try to you know when when we shape a scene, we try to make it a little bit special. You know, yeah. when when you think when 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 you think too much, you say ah, I'm gonna make something that is unique. You don't, you know that you will never succeed. You just try to watch everything that was done in that area. You try to watch all these, you know, if you have time to try to understand those scenes and how they, they, they do it. And you try to add your flavor. You try to add, you know, the stories are like 30. You don't have more than 30 stories. So, so, so by adding that, you know, by adding yourself, uh, you can make it a little bit, Interesting. Like I, to me, sex scenes are very beautiful because I like to watch people that you know make love. But I remember, like a, a professor of mine said to me, "Don't do sex scenes because it's a very easy way to catch the eye uh, of of, a, of an audience because you you go and trigger the voyeurism in right. that. So that's not very good. You should make sex with the audience. You don't show sex, but." I, that that was very important to me, but I, but I I said all I, I always said to me, sex should be about uh, the story, you know. So to me, I hate that when it's vulgar, and I don't think that when they make love, those two people, you know, that they see themselves because he's always covering with that you know, sure. hood. And when they make love, they're beautiful, you know. I and I I think I think it's very beautiful, and I love the fact that he's so strong and manly, but she dominates this. You know, very hairy and strong guy because she's 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 more powerful than him, and for that reason, she helps him at the end. I think there's a little bit of a love story there, even if it's just. And, and to me, yeah, they don't have to be vulgar. I don't know if you ever saw the film that I made before. There's a sex scene too there. That's kind of a kind of a rape, uh, but uh, but it's 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 all done with with the stomach and 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 there's a lot of. Up, up, you do a step with the characters. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just a sex scene, and I, you know, it's very eighties and right. <laughs> I don't no, know. I understand. Yeah, for sure. Now, I mean, I'm curious because I love the musical cues in the film as well. I mean, just with him paying the piano under the uh, under the big top and the choice of song. Like, does that go back to sort of your desire to sort of give your own little twist, your own little flavor in it? Because I mean, there's such subtle little choices. But there's such rewards for the audience as well, and they help build the character too. Well, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a composer too, so uh, my my character is like uh, they need to be 
a musician a little bit you know? so uh yeah music is very very important to me and uh, um when it, it, and actually i'm going to tell you and um, the idea of, of any friends uh, being able to see the future by using ether was through music because i said ah oh, it would very be cool to have this piece of music there but I mean, there's no reason. I mean, why, 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 what do you want to do it like this? It looks too much, you know, uh, the, the end of the author, you know. I, I have to make it about the story. And oh, fuck, what if Franz can see the future and hear things about the future and he just listens? So that's where he picks stuff from the future. And as I said, you know, uh, it is important for me that the voice is mine and, and I can reproduce what was in the past I can start, you know, you can you can have all the ideas, but I'm making just an example of communism. But if you haven't lived communism, you don't know what communism is. You know, you don't, you don't, you can't. Know. Of course, can't yeah. Re- yeah, so, so I said, this is me telling the story. So it's going to be infusing the past with all what we are, with, with ourselves and make it our own. So let's make a twist. Let's make music. Let's let's talk to the people of my generation and use songs that might, you know, being even beautiful for people, of to, for young guys of today, of course, for, for the old ones. No, I mean, I got to ask, because I mean, in watching your film, it felt on so many different levels very much a love letter and very appreciative of cinema as a whole across a myriad of different genres. And I mean, I've got to ask you, if you can think back to the younger days, was there a movie or a moment in your life that had the light bulb go off in your head that made you want to get into this business? Oh, man. You know, I think, yeah, it's a love letter to cinema. Yeah, point taken, yes. Because there's a lot of quotes I remember uh, um, a, a, a critic of in Italy wrote something that was really bad. They said, Mainetti wants to quote all his masters and wants to overcome all his masters. I said, no, man, I mean, of course there's a moment of E.T. on the moon, but I want to make it my own because I'm quoting not just that moment, I'm quoting, you know, the idea of that moment what, what, what is for what, would, what was for us that cinema so et is probably the movie that was really strong for me i think it's that i or i like to remember it like this because it's more romantic that i think it's the first movie that i ever saw in cinema with my dad my dad is a very particular person is very uh on his own but you know, when we went to cinema together, we went together. So, so that's that's that that that, that was maybe a strong moment, and it, I I I can you know cinema was was very important to me because it it, it taught me how to I can't say it taught me how to live, but it was a way for me to study reality, and because I was so scared about it, and I always needed a movie. So I think the first one that made me that shocked me when I was very when I was very young was 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 the magic of et yeah i didn't think probably that i wanted to become a director but it's it's i think that's a stamp on my heart and of course there's a, if you think about it about matilda the, the character of the girl when she shines she has her heart beating like et i mean i made it i made it i made it the same so, <laughs> so, so the, and, and all the power comes from there maybe i'm, I'm just you know going free with my thoughts so you made me realize that yeah that that that's the the bulk yeah <laughs> well i mean first of all fuck the critic who said that because i think you're absolutely right and i mean i love the comparison to et because i mean there's flair but there's reality in this movie as well and i mean i think that's one of the pure magic of cinema and i mean honestly i love your film i can't wait for more audiences to see it and boss man keep thank up the good work thank you so much for the time today thank you thank you. i remember a guy that told me you know who do you love more steven spielberg or robert zemeckis because robert zemeckis has a way to keep the world there and you know spielberg yes he's good but you know it, it always there's all, always this impurity of reality there and that's the beauty of, about spielberg that's the that's the genius man that's exactly the genius. that's the genius <laughs> thank you man. again just congrats on this film and keep up the good work i can't wait for the new one thank you thank you very much all right thank talk you. to you again soon 
And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs. <laughs> 